Hello and happy Wednesday. I am Mr. Steve here at Calvary Reformed Church. I would love to give you an update on where we're at and give you some options for what you can be doing at home with your kids in light of us not having kids club, church on Sunday, or discovery time. First off, today is a Wednesday, so we're going to go right to kids club. What can we be doing today to interact with our kids and to be discipling our kids? Well, I've got a couple of challenges for you that you can do that I think are very practical but could be very fun for your kids as well. First one is to write a letter and or a picture to someone that you might not see for a little while. So that could be a teacher, it could be a family member, it could be your pastor, or it could be a prayer partner here at Calvary. Think about someone that you might not get to see for a little while just because we're going to be at home for a little bit more often. And instead of calling them or FaceTiming them, I want you to just sit down, write a letter, draw a picture to that person. You can tell them what you've been doing since you've been at home, or you can ask them what they're doing, uh, or you can do both. Uh, find a different way to connect with people uh, besides just using a device. So that's challenge number one. Challenge number two, I encourage you to dig into your Bible, look in the New Testament, Look at the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Look at the stories of Jesus. I want you to think about the parables that he teaches and the miracles that he performed. Pick a story. There's lots of them. And what I want you to do is take one of those stories and make your own Take Two for Kids video where you act out or reenact the story. Just like we normally get to see at Kids Club on Wednesday nights where I and some of you guys have helped me make those videos, I want to challenge you to look at that story, read about it, write your own script, act out the different parts as a family, and then I'd love to see that. If you want to record that and either post it on Facebook or Instagram, um, or even just email it to me or text message me that video, I would love to see it and to see what how creative you guys are and what you can come up with and what you can teach us. And we gotta talk about the carnival because I know many of you kids are a little sad that we're not gonna be having kids club on the day of our carnival, which is one week from today. I don't know when we're going to have this carnival, but I can assure you we will have it. You worked super hard at kids club this year. You earned a ton of points, which means you're gonna have a ton of tickets to play at the raffle, uh, to play games, to buy stuff from the store. You're gonna get that carnival, um, but we're just not quite sure when it's gonna happen. So don't feel like it was a wasted year. One, you got to build great relationships. You got to learn more about God. You got to do plenty of fun stuff and activities. You got to eat delicious food, and you're still gonna have that carnival. It's just gonna be a little bit later than we expected. Moving on to Sunday mornings, I noticed that many of you were able to watch our service online. You could watch it on your TV or an iPad or a phone. And I saw not only were parents doing that, but a lot of kids were doing that too. So give yourself a big thumbs up, pat on the back, and good job on paying attention and listening to that church service on Sunday. And I wanted to provide something to help you out in that process too. So you'll probably see over my shoulder right now a couple pictures um, of some forms that I made up that you can use to help you keep track of what's happening during the service while you're at home. There's one for elementary age students that involves a little more writing and a little more detail. And there's one for our pre-K students, which has a little more just sort of marking boxes and drawing pictures. So whichever one is the right one for you, make sure um, what you can do with that. I'm gonna send those to your parents. So if you have a printer at home, you can print off my sheets, but maybe you don't have a printer. You could just look at the picture that I sent your parents and you can make your own sheet from there. But I also want to uh, reward you. If you are doing that and you do that every week and you're marking the things off and you're writing down your ideas and your thoughts, your parents are gonna take a picture of that and they're gonna send it to me. I'm gonna keep track of who's doing that and who's uh, following along and I will have a reward system for you so you'll be getting something to congratulate you on how well you've been interacting with our service. There are two more things that you can be doing regularly that I think help us to uh, check in and build our relationship with God, but just also take us to a different place in our thinking um, that may be helpful as well. The first one is, all of you, or most of you, should have your Jesus Calling Kids devotional book. It's that orange book with a birdie on it, 
and there's a short kid-friendly devotional for every single day of the year. I know you may have a lot of schoolwork and a lot of things you're working on, um, but I encourage you, it takes five or 10 minutes that you can just go through that devotional together as a family. Um, and then it's a really good time to just kind of check in, see how we're doing, see what we need to pray about, that kind of thing. So when we do this in discovery time, here are the steps that we take to help get us ready to do a devotional. Step one, calm ourselves. Take a deep breath, count down from 10, find a still spot where we can sit and we calm ourselves. Then we pray, simple prayer. God, I come to you, speak to me, help me listen. Step three, we read the devotional. Step four, we ask ourselves or ask a neighbor, what sticks out? What is important from this devotional? Step five, this is an optional step, but each devotion in the Jesus Calling devotional has some scripture verses that you can read in addition to the devotional. And lastly, step six is a quiet prayer to God. There's one other practice I think is really great. Uh, it's one actually my daughter Molly taught me that they do at her school and it's about mindfulness. Oftentimes they will look around and they'll find anything, literally anything that is around you and you'll look at it and think about how did this item get to me? How did my food that I'm eating get to my table? So we have to backtrack and think about all the steps that it took in order for your food to get to you. Um, and we walk ourselves backwards into thinking about all the many, many steps and all the many people involved with getting everything that we have to our homes. And I think that's a good reminder to us of, of how important we all are to each other and that we all play a part, no matter what our jobs are, um, in making our lives a better place. The couch that you're sitting on, the refrigerator that keeps your food cold, those are really good practices for us to just kind of slow down and really appreciate um, all the things that we have and all the ways that we're blessed and why we even have those things. So I hope this is helpful for you. I hope you feel a little bit equipped and encouraged that um, you can lead your kids well during this time, that your kids can have an act of faith during this time. If you have questions, you can always text me. You can email me, kids at calvaryon8th.org. And I love, to, I love to see your videos you make with your kids and any other questions or comments that they might want to ask me, that then I could make a video back to them explaining some things that they have questions about. Bye.